Hello and welcome back to chapter 7 of the CCNA2 lecture series Routing and Switching Essentials with me, Joachim Kjørestad from the University of Skövde. And the topic of this lecture is Access Control Lists or ACLs. And this is actually one of the funnier parts of uh, networking in my opinion because now we we get to get down and dirty with security. It's also in my, my opinion the final very a tough part of this course so from here on in it's getting down the slope until the business end of this course so what we're gonna do is that we're going to look at access control lists what are four different types of ACLs how they should be implemented and of course how you can configure and troubleshoot them so beginning with what is an ACL well in essence ACL is a way to uh, implement basic firewalling on routers. So an access control list is a list of rules that dictate what traffic that is allowed to come in or out of the router. So for instance, you can at a router set uh, an ACL towards the internet that would allow incoming email but deny incoming telnet because you don't want telnet traffic. You can also have a, a access control list like a router one here in this example saying that you're not allowed to have video inside this network. Uh, you can also say that the Switch 2 devices are not allowed to configure uh, to connect to the Switch 1 devices or whatever. So basically access control lists are for denying or uh, allowing different types of traffic. So it can do this by filtering on the properties of layer 3 and layer 4. So that is you can filter uh, on IP address and you can filter on TCP port numbers. So what, we, what you do is basically that you specify rules that deny or allow traffic based on source and destination IP number or on the destination port number. So something that you should know is that an access control list is made up from rules and, and you evaluate the rules from top to bottom. So the first matching rule will dictate what's going to happen to a package. Uh, but you should also know that every access control list in the Cisco world will end with an implicit deny, meaning that uh, if there are no permit rules matching a package, it's going to be denied. So looking further, uh, you have two different types of ACLs or two different ways to apply them to interfaces, because that's what you do. Uh, you have the inbound ACLs and the outbound bound ACLs. And what an inbound ACL does is that it filters package that is coming into an interface before, any, before it's routed to an outbound interface. So in this in this case, the first thing that happens when the router comes to the interface is that it is checked against the ACL to see if it's allowed or if it is to be dropped. Uh, on the outbound case, then the, uh, then the ACL is evaluated just before the package and exits the router. So, um, before we move on, there is a concept that is called wildcard masks that you have to know about. And as a little bit of background, we're going to dig in deeper into what, how you create ACLs. But an ACL is essentially made up from access control entries, which is the rules. And the rule can be either a deny or allow rule. And what it includes is either permit or deny, but also the IP address and wildcard mask to, uh, that dictates what devices that are to be uh, allowed or to be, to be matched by the rule, really. So a rule is expressed using this IP address and a wildcard subnet mask. So uh, traditionally, looking at this line here, if you would want to uh, permit traffic from the network 192.168.10.0, then the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.0. But the wildcard mask is the opposite of that. So that's the opposite of the subnet mask. So the wildcard mask for this network would be 000, 000, 000, and we're actually going to explore wildcard masks in quite a great deal in the, in the upcoming slides because it's not only used in ACLs, it's also used in a couple of routing protocols and other cases as well. So how a wildcard mask works? Well, remember that when we have a subnet mask, a subnet mask is going to be a series of ones from left to right. And then at one point, you're going to have zeros instead of ones. So the list of ones that dictates how large portion of the subnet mask or how large portion of the IP address that is the network address and the rest what's the host address. When we talk about wildcard masks, we have a number or we have zeros and ones. The common case is that we have leading zeros and then ending ones and the leading zeros, they dictate how large uh, how large a portion of the IP address that has to be 
matching with an incoming package in order for a match to happen. So consider a case like in the table down here where we have a package that is incoming and this package is from 192.168.10.0 uh, and we have a rule in our uh, we have a rule in our uh, uh, in our ACL that says that packages from that uh, matching that IP address with a wildcard mask of 00255255 are going to be blocked. So when we have the wildcard mask with 00 and then 255255, that means that for an incoming package to be considered a match to this rule, then the first two octets have to match. So in this case, we're only looking at packages with a source IP of 192168, and then it's going to be a match, whether it's 192.168.12 or 20 or 255 or whatever. So that's basically how it works. So look, let's look at it a little bit more in example. So there is a special case wildcard mask, which is the all zeros one. The all zeros one, that's the host wildcard, uh, wildcard mask. So when we have a wildcard mask of all zeros in combination with an IP address, then a match will only occur when, the, when you have an exact match. So if you have the IP address of 192.168.11 and you have the all zeros wildcard mask, then the only uh, IP address that is matching this combination is 192.168.11. Uh, however, if you do it the opposite way and you have a all zeros uh, or or a all ones wildcard mask, then it's an any. So, in this case, if we have one nine two one six eight one one and then all ones wildcard masks, then any IP address will match that. So, in this case, the IP address doesn't really matter because it's going to be a match anyway, just based on the wildcard mask that says match any. Um, and in the final example. What we have here is a, a wildcard mask of 000, 000 255, and what this says is that we have to have a match in the first three octets. So if we have an IP address of 192.168.11 and the wildcard mask 000, 000 255, well, then it's going to be a match because any, uh, any IP address in the 192.168.1 network will match. So I hope you're grasping it here. This is basically uh, saying what networks will match, but you do it with a wildcard mask, which is an inverse of the subnet mask. So the easiest way to calculate the wildcard mask is actually to take, take the subnet mask of a network and then you subtract the full network. Uh, and No, you take a full subnet mask, so you take an all ones network mask and then you subtract the subnet mask. So if you have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 0, and you subtract that from an all ones subnet mask, then you get 255 left. So the wildcard mask of that would be 000, 000, 255. And a little bit more complicated example, if you have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 240, then you subtract that from the all ones subnet mask, and the result you get is 000, 000, 000 15. So there are end of chapter tasks for this wildcard stuff and wildcard calculations. Make sure you do them so that you really grasp how wildcard how wild masks work. It's because you don't want that to be a troublesome issue for you. And not with ACLs and not with the upcoming courses. So let's instead look at some implementation guidelines. So now that we know that we have ACLs that are basically lists of rules that uh, allow or, or block traffic based on IP and port numbers, then you should also know that you can implement them in different ways. So there are actually a couple of ways to implement them. There is a to in total uh, on one single interface uh, or on one router running two interfaces, you can actually have a total of eight separate ACLs. And this is because you can have one ACL per protocol, so that's IPv4 or IPv6. You can have one per direction, that is in or out, inbound or outbound, as we just discussed. You can also have per interface, and yeah, and that causes for a lot of access control lists. So, uh, how should we do this in the best way? Well, uh, the main rule is that you use ACLs 
uh, on firewalls positioned between your network and the internet because when you have a firewalling you want to block traffic that should be blocked as early on as possible if there is traffic that is going to be denied for any one of your hosts the goal should be to block it from even entering your network uh, of course, depending on your filtering rules, you may have internal filtering, maybe the student network isn't allowed to access the staff network and so, so, so on and so forth. And then you, you of course, use ACLs on your internal routers. Uh, but the goal is always to deny traffic as early on as possible. Because the good thing with, deny, with doing this is that, well, traffic is always loaded on the network. And when there is traffic that's not going to be allowed to reach the destination anyway, we might as well remove it as quick as possible. So there are also a list of guidelines set up by Cisco, beginning with that you should base your ACLs on the security policy of your organization. And well, this is uh, this is a given, but it's sometimes forgotten. You sh and the idea here is that you should consider what you need and do what you need. Uh, also, when, when you do uh, ACLs, you should, sh should prepare a description of your, what you want your ACLs to do and really get through that in your mind in in your head. Uh, it's also quite smart to use a text editor to create, edit and save ACLs. This is because uh, it's easier to implement them. If you write them in a text editor, you can just copy them into your router. And this also helps you create a library of ACLs that you can reuse so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And of course, you should test your ACLs on a development network before you actually take them into your production network to avoid costly errors. So uh, going through, uh, there is something that I want you to really take note of. What Cisco say is that there is a distinction. There are actually standard and extended ACLs. And I'm going to discuss this in a little, little while. But what Cisco says for implementation is that you should place standard ACLs as close to the destination as possible, but you should place extended ACLs as close to the source as possible. What I say is that you should always, always, always try to configure ACLs so that you can actually place them as close to the source as ever possible because you always want to block traffic early on. And so I just mentioned standard and extended ACLs and standard ACLs are the ones that are actually thought as standard in CCNA2. Those can filter traffic based on a source address. And that is basically it. Uh, and I see here that if I'm not completely mistaken, this is an error. So what you can do is that you can say, uh, so what you can do is that you can say that you traffic from this network isn't allowed in. That's a standard ACL. With extended ACLs, you can also include destination addresses in the filtering. So you can say standard go uh, traffic going from this device to that device cannot come in, or traffic going from that device to that device can come in, and you can add port numbers in your filtering. Uh, and the port uh, and being able to add the ports, well, that's quite important because what it does is that it allows you to filter based on traffic type. So maybe you want that device to be able to communicate with another device using SSH, but you don't want it to be able to happen using uh, Telnet, and you will need uh, and you will need extended ACLs for that. B uh, extended uh, ACLs is briefly included in this lecture, and it's gonna be in any CCNA two course I'm ever holding because I think it's that important. But if you're taking a standard CCNA two course, well, then it's beyond the scope of the course. So let's look on how we create standard access lists. The command is in global configuration mode, access list, and then an access list number. Uh, then you set it to be deny, permit, or a remark, and then you configure the source address and wildcard mask. So an example would be access list 10, permit, permit host 192.168.10.10. In this case, I'm using a host instead of the old zeros mask. Uh, so host is a keyword that can be used instead of that host uh, host wildcard mask. There is also a keyword that's any. Uh, so any would be a combination. Uh, if you do any, you would just omit both the host keyword and the IP address and just do access list 10 permit any. So that would be a ACL that permits any traffic. Um, and you do that sometimes because maybe remember that I said that every ACL holds an implicit deny at the end of the access list and you want, may want it to have an uh, allowable instead and then you would add a permit any to the end of the access list. 
Uh, you can also create them using the command IP access list standard and then supply a number or name. Then you will get into an access list configuration mode uh, where you create your AC, uh, ACEs. Uh, in the first example here, you do what you do is actually that you create access control entries um, that's going to belong to the list of the number that you specify. But if you do IP access list uh, standard and then a number or name, then you're going into an ACL configuration mode, which in my opinion is a little bit easier to manage. And then you just write the access control entries. So for instance, permit host or permit 10.10.10.0 and the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255 to permit traffic coming from the 10.10.10.0 network. So doing standard isn't that much harder, only that a command is a little bit longer. So in this case, you could first go and do access list uh, and an access list number, in this case above 99, because access lists of number below uh, one and uh, below 99, that's standard and above 99, that's extended. Uh, then again, then you can specify a protocol. So you can specify TCP, you can specify UDP, you can specify IP, you can specify ICMP, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then we do our deny permit or remark statement before we do the source, the source and source wildcard mask followed by the destination and destination wildcard mask and then we can have then we're going to specify a port number if we want to and in this case we first have an operator so we can have equals greater than less than and so on and so forth and then a port number so for instance to allow all uh, web traffic coming on port 80 what we would do is access list 110 permit because it's a permit and then TCP because we want to filter based on TCP port numbers. Then I just did any any because it's going to be from, from any address to any address and then equals to 80 and a equals to 80 would be matching all traffic uh, coming on port number 80. So if we want to do it using the IP access list way, we would do IP access list extended and then a number or name and then do our uh, ACEs. So for instance, we can do permit IP 192.168.10.0 and that will per and then 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.255. That's this part here. That is the source address. So, so far we're permitting IP traffic coming from this network, the 192.168.10.0, going to this network, 10.10.0.0. 0, 0. Um, and then with a sound mask 0.0.255.255 says that it is everything that is to the 1010 10 network. And if we wanted to do, you see there are no port number here and that is because when we do IP we can't filter based on port number. But if we did TCP here instead, instead of IP, then we could add an EQ and maybe we want, uh, yeah we want web again so we go with 80 worst idea ever, but, but whatever. And you can also do the permit TCP, and then we have, again, the source and destination IP, and you can do established. And established is a spe special case um, access control list that is going to keep track of TCP sessions. So what happens here is that actually that you do this to allow traffic out of the router. So you specify a list where you allow your inside network to communicate with the outside world or some other network. And then when you have the established flag, you also allow return traffic. And that is, I guess, a little bit beyond the scope of this course. So let's move on to how we apply ACLs to interfaces before we go into the demonstration. So what we have to do first is that we have to create an access control list. So we do that, for instance, with access list one permit and then an IP address and wildcard mask. Next, we go into our interface and then what we do is basically IP access group and then the access list number, right as you see right here, and then the direction which can be in or out if we wanted to be on incoming packages or outgo outgoing packages. And this is something that you have to wrap your ha head around, do the labs to test and so on and so forth. So what happens here is that this configuration will uh, create the standard access list one and then apply it to, an interf to the interface as an outbound filter. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna go ahead and do a demonstration. Um, so we're in Packet Tracer. And what we're going to do is that we're going to create and apply a named standard access, con access list. So what we do here is that we work with router1 and what we're going to do 
is that we are going to make a configuration that only allows um, a certain IP address to, okay, now let's see what we're gonna do because I want this to work. Okay, we're gonna make sure that only PC2 can access the file server. So right now, you see that if I go pinging here, I will have success from different networks to the file server. But I only want PC2 to be able to access the file server. So I'm going to so solve this using a standard ACL. So first off, I'm going to see what IP address this, this one has. So it's 192.168.10.3. Uh, so what I do is that since I'm doing a standard ACL where I can only filter on source address, I will have to place it outbound on this interface. Because if I place it out inbound on this interface, which would be the alternative, then I will also um, modify traffic to this network and this network. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a one single access, one single uh, AC uh, access list entry that permits this host. And the effect of that will be that all other hosts will be denied. So what we do is that we go to router one and we go to configure, uh, configure terminal. And the first step then would be to do IP access list standard and let's call it file. And then a specific one single entry would be yes to permit host because it's a single host and 192.168 and I already forgot what it was, 10.3, 10.3. So that's basically it. Uh, remember that there is a default deny all statement at the end of this access list. So we don't have to deny other traffic. We're just permitting what we want to permit and everything else will be denied implicitly. So next thing we have to do is going into this interface, FA01, so we go interface FA01 and what we do then is IP access group file and out. So this is IP access group saying that we should apply an access control list with this name. It could also be a number if we had numbered ACLs and then that direction which in this case is outbound. So when we do that you should see that we can still ping from PC2 to the file server but if we try to ping the file server from everywhere else, it's going to fail. And that is because of that access control list. And so I also want to show you here uh, some verification. So if I do a go do show access list, you can see that what I do get with that command is a listing of the access control lists I have. I get, I get the lines, the access control entries, and I can also see where the different matches are. So uh, let's just see real quick what's the IP address of the web server. So we go desktop I, there. So I'm going to see if there is actually a web server uh, software running here. I can do that by going to a client, going to a web browser, and then just inputting the IP. And you see yeah, that, yes, here it is. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to make an access control list that makes sure that PC0 and PC1 can contact the web server using uh, HTTP, using port 80, but not with a ping. So what I would do then is that I go to this router and now we need an extended ACL. So what we do is that we configure, a st uh, we, we start by creating one. So that's IP access list extended. And in this case, I'm going to call it web. The first statement here is that I want to see if there is web traffic that is sent by those. So what I do is that I do permit and then I have to specify this network. So the source IP and this network will be 192.168.20. So we have traffic going from 192.168.20.0 and the subnet, uh, subnet mask would be 255.255.255.0 meaning that the wildcard mask would be 0 .0 0 0 0.0.0.255. Then I'm going to specify the destination. Okay, I have to have permit, forgot TCP. Permit TCP 
source network destination, which is going to be a single host, which is the web server, which had this 192.168.100.100. So next we go 192.168.100.100. And then, as you remember, I now have to specify the port number. So I do that with EQ80. 80 is for web. I don't have to do anything else. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to apply this access list and in this case it should only care, care about this network and traffic sent from this network. So the best place to put it would be to do it on this interface. So the interface I'm choosing is uh, ETH 101. Okay. Uh, interface Ethernet was it this was this was troublesome interface zero one zero zero one zero and then I do IP access group uh, web and then inbound because I want it for traffic coming in on this interface right and then we go enter so now let's see the idea here is that PC one should be able to go to the desktop and browse to the web server and you see that it works, but it should not be allowed to ping the web server and that fails. So this is again access lists in action for you. So what we do is that we go back and we do a show access list just to show you this. And if we look at the extended access list here that I did web, then we have five matches to this rule and that's for the HTTP traffic. So that was it for this little demonstration. Let's get back to the theory and look at how we can modify ACLs. So ACLs are uh, created using, as you see here, let's get back actually to Packet Tracer. So if you look here, you can see that there are, that this an access, access rule or an access list which has rules. So this is numbered. So here we have number 10. And if we, if we would add another one, it would get number 20 by default. So what we have to do if we want to modify an ACL is that we have to be able to refer to those, those numbers. So if we want to modify the ACLs, there is, a few, uh, there is a couple of different ways. The first one is that we just save the ACL to a, a text editor, as you see here in step two. We have it in a text editor, and what we do then is that we simply change in the text editor, then we remove the access list, doing no access list and the access list number, and then we copy it, uh, copy it in from the text editor. And the reason why we want to do this is because it helps us really keep track of the ordering of the rules, because we can't just add a new access control entry if we want the access control list to do something else. We have to add it in the right place. There is a way that we can do this within the Sys with, within Cisco because as I showed you, if we create an access list and we do show, you can see that all access control entries are numbered. So here we have an access control list with two entries. So we have 20 and uh, we have 10 and 20. If we go into that access list using the IP access list command, we can actually refer to do those numbers. So one thing we can do here if we want to change entry number 10 is that we can do no, no 10 and then it will be removed and then we can re, uh, reapply it. And what we do when we want to reapply, when we want to set an access control entry on a specific, with a specific number is that we set the number in front. And we can also do this as demonstrated here to insert a new entry. So if we have an access list with entry 10 and 20 and we want to have a new entry in between here, then we can go IP access list standard and then we can put 15 in front of the new entry and we'll have the new entry input in between those two. So those are the sequence numbering of the ACLs that allows us to do some modification uh, on the fly, not using a text editor. So how do we verify? Well, uh, what we can do is that we can do show IP interface and then, an, and then a specific interface. So that will show us if there is an ACL applied to that interface. And then we have, as we noted last uh, in the demo, we can have show access lists and that will provide an overview of the ACLs and show what ACs that had package, match, package packets matching. Um, 
And you should also note, and this is quite important, that ACLs can be applied to VGE lines to secure SSH access even further. And then you don't do IP access group. Instead, you go into the uh, VTY line configuration, line VTY 0 to 15 or whatever, and then you do access class and the ACL number and in, and that's it. So we're going to do a little bit of demo before we go into some troubleshooting. So I just want to show you in practice how we do this modification. So what we do is that we go back into configuration terminal and for our access list, uh, for our file access list, what we do is that we do uh, IP access list standard file. So we get into configuration mode. And remember that this was an access list that permitted PC2. What we realize now is that, well, we don't actually want to permit PC2. We want to permit the entire network that PC2 is in. So let's do a do show access lists to see what it actually did. And looking here, it, we had line number 10, permit host 192.168.10.3. What we want instead is permit 192.168.10.0 and then the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. So what we do is that we go no, no 10 and then we can do show access list again. And you see that now standard IP access list file that's completely empty. So what we do is that we add a rule again. So we go add 10 because if we want to, no, we go five because we want to specify it as five for some reason. So we do permit 192.168.10.0 and then the subnet mask or wildcard mask. And if we go show access list again, you can see that now it's been added the results should be the same. PC2 can still ping the file server and the web server should not be allowed to ping the file server. So it still works. So what if we want to add this network as well? Well, let's do that. So what we would do then is that we can say, for instance, 50, uh, 15, and then we do a new permit. And in this case, we want to permit the 20 network. So we go permit 192.168. 20, 0, and again the same wildcard mask. So now we're actually allowing this network in, but it still won't work, and that is because of the default deny all statement on the access list that is going out of this interface towards the web server. Remember that in the last uh, in the last demo we said that those are only those devices or, or this network is only allowed to communicate to, to the web server. But we did it on as an inbound here, so everything else is denied, including traffic to the file server. So we get a little bit of troubleshooting here while we're at it. So what we have to do is that we actually have to go into our extended IP uh, access list that is web, and we have to modify that a little bit, because the idea was just to not allow any other traffic to the web server. So what we do is that we go back, and then we go into IP, IP access list, extended web and you see that one here now there is one permit rule saying that the devices in this network are allowed to communicate with a web server what we need next is actually a deny rule so we're copying this and we're going paste and we're going to work with it a little bit what we're gonna do is that we're going to deny IP because we're gonna deny all other IP traffic so in this case we do oh crap in this case what we're doing is that we do a full deny we're saying that any IP traffic did I lose it again any di any IP traffic from this network to the web server is going to be denied. And why does that work? Well, if we look at the access list, what's going to happen is for the extended access list here, when every package is coming to the outbound interface with the destination of the web server, first, we're going to look here on the first line. If it is on port 80, www traffic, then it's going to per be permitted. But if it's something else, it's going to go through to this rule where it's going to be denied. So even if we have a full deny here, it's not going to de deny 
80 tra uh, port 80 traffic because the port 80 traffic is already permitted. So let's see that it works in action. So if we ping from PC0 to the web server, we get a fail. But if we go into PC1 and go to the web browser and we type in the IP address of the web browser, then we can still access. So if we do this show again, you can see that now we actually have matches on both of those lines. So that's it. Next thing we wanted to do, uh, or what we uh, next thing we wanted to do was that we have to. Uh, this one should be able to contact the file server, and to enable that, we should add a final line here because this is an ACL. There is only now there is only traffic that is going to the web server that can match. But as we have an implicit deny here on this access list, as we have on any access list, any traffic going to somewhere else will also be blocked. So how we fix that is by adding a permit any any statement. So we do permit IP any any to change the logic of this access list to end with a permit any any instead of a deny any any. And now if we ping from PC0 to the file server, we get a success. And I can show you here in the show IP, show IP access list that is this because there is a match to our new permit IP any any statement. So with that said, let's go back and look at some troubleshooting before I'm sending you along your way to do some challenges. And what you should know with troubleshooting is that rem you must remember this implicit deny all statement. So an ACL with only one deny ACE will in effect deny all traffic. And if you have an access control list, as we've seen in the example with only one permit, then everything else is going to be blocked. Also, access control lists are evaluated top to bottom, so the first match is going to decide what happens to a package. So if you have a deny any any at the beginning of an access list, any traffic will be blocked no matter how many permits you have at the end. Also remember that inbound ACLs handle traffic coming into an interface and outbound traffic handle traffic going out of an interface. With that said, we're done for access control lists. What you should do is do the troubleshooting ACLs in 7.3.2.4 and also the skills integration in 7.4.1.2. In so this was Shepard uh, Shepard 7 ACLs in the CCNA2 routing and switching with me, Joachim Scherestad from the University of Hovde. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did and if you like this kind of material, I encourage you to go to www.his.se to see what courses we offer in reality because we're much nicer in person. Thank you and goodbye and see you next time for some DHCP if I'm not mistaken.